guys can be seated. Come on, can you give those guys a hand? They do great. I don't know about you, but uh, if, I, if I had to play for three services, come on, this is their second one. They've been here like all day, pretty much. If I had to play, how many of you know like blood would be dripping from your fingers? Like they are, they are getting it. I don't know how they do it. They do a fantastic job every single time. Merry Christmas, everybody. Y'all good? Yeah. Hey, if you got your Bible and you want to turn to Luke chapter two, that's where we're going to be at tonight, uh, just for a few seconds. But uh, I got to ask you a question: How many of you have had a Christmas that you had an idea about how it was going to go down, and it did not go down that way? Right? Anybody ever had that? Like three people. The rest of y'all, y'all, y'all picture it, and it's perfect. Is that right? I think y'all are just lying. Is what I think. This is church, everybody. Hello. Right, so I feel like uh, the the reason you and I struggle at Christmas because when you come into Christmas, you got a million different emotions in the room, do you not? Like you got people who uh, love Christmas time, you got people who do, really don't like Christmas time, you got people who uh, who are having the best Christmas ever, and then you got people who who. Uh, the, the person that they want to spend Christmas with the most isn't here anymore, and then you got those emotions, right? So there's a million different emotions, but really in, in the grand scheme of things that every single Christmas, when you have it planned out in your head, most of the time it does not go that way. Right, so you, you bought a, a Christmas present for your kid, you got uh, an idea about how they're gonna open it up and they're just gonna look at you and go, you're the best dad on the face of the planet, you're awesome. And then they open it up and they're like, I want it blue. And you're like, I will make you blue right now. I will make you blue in this moment, right? I'm pretty sure you don't get in trouble for that at Christmas. But uh, like, it just doesn't go how you planned. And in reality, that should encourage you and not discourage you. Because I think you and I, we live in this place where if everything doesn't go great, then, then the joy is gone from our lives during Christmas. And we're so focused on everything else that we miss the whole reason that we're actually celebrating to begin with, right? But in reality, the first Christmas should show you that when your Christmas goes crazy, then it's okay. Because the first Christmas went a little crazy too. Right, because how many of you, uh, I think that if Mary was thinking about her first kid, right, she was thinking about Mary, me and Joseph are going to get married and then we're going to have our first baby and, and, and I'm excited about all the, the, the bridal showers, yes, but the baby showers I'm more interested in, right, and we're going to get baby gifts and clothes and oh my gosh, the little clothes are going to be so cool. And she had this idea about what she wanted her first birth to be like, and how many of you know that's probably not what she got? Because what she got was a visit from an angel that goes, hey, listen, you're going to be the mom of the Savior of the world, and you're pregnant now, and she's going, no, that's not, no, I'm not, and he goes, yeah, you are, right? And now she has to tell this story to Joseph, to which he probably doesn't really believe, and nobody else really believes as well if we're just being honest and then to top that now everybody has to go to their own hometown to register their family so that the government can see how many people that they own at that point right so now their town that they had to go to was 85 to 90 miles from where they were currently at so now they have to make this trek when she's pregnant so just imagine this for a second. Nobody likes the IRS. Nobody likes paying taxes. Am I, am I correct? Okay. Y'all are still not responding. Y'all like paying taxes? Okay. Y'all just do the deal. Uh, but let's just say that the, that the IRS comes to you and says, hey, you got to pay your taxes this year, but you got to pay them in California. And you got to walk. See, now you're going, oh my gosh, like, uh, this is a lot. So it's pretty much going, hey, you got you to go to Panama City Beach to pay your taxes and you're pregnant and she's walking or some say she's riding a donkey either which way I don't necessarily know that riding a donkey is better than walking when you're that far along anyway right so now they're on this trip can you imagine the conversation they're having on the trip right she's griping he's trying to be silent but at some point he goes you know what I'm just gonna walk ahead I'm going to leave you riding the camel right here. I'm going to walk ahead. It'll follow. You just need some time by yourself. I can see it all over you. Right? And she's like, you better not walk away from me. You did this to me. And he's like, no, 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 no. No, I did not. Right? The only guy in human history that can go, no, that is not me. I don't know why you're mad at me. Right? And then when they get to where they're going, 
There's not even a spot for them to lay down. And she's about ready to have the baby and there's nowhere to go. How many of you know this is not her plan? This is not the ideal, right? And then you get down to Luke chapter two. Look at Luke chapter two, verse eight. It says, and there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And watch this. This will be a sign to you. Okay, shepherds, this will be a sign that you're going to find the savior of the world. This will be a sign to you. You'll find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Now, I think this is a big deal for you and I, because if you think about Jesus, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, like, I mean, he deserves the best and he deserves everything we got, right? So you would expect him to be born in a castle, right? With a little robe, little ring on the finger, like fancy food, fancy plates, fancy everything. But what God decides to do is to put him in a barn with a whole bunch of animals and they have no place to lay them except for what the animals eat out of. And that should speak to you. Because here's the truth. You get all upset at Christmas or really in general when life doesn't go as planned, when, when life messes up, when chaos happens in your life. But can I tell you the first Christmas shows you that Jesus wants to be involved in your mess. Because he was born in to mess. He was born into the mess. Everybody follow me so far. Right, this will be a sign to you. So maybe this Christmas when Uncle Vinny says something that he shouldn't say around the table, around your kids, you already got onto him a million times before, but he's gonna open his mouth again. When it all gets chaotic this Christmas, just remember that Jesus is found in the middle of the mess. That the only thing perfect about Christmas is Jesus. It's not gonna be the meal, it's not gonna be the gifts, it's not gonna be the family reunion, it's gonna be Jesus. And if you look for anything else other than Jesus to be perfect, your Christmas will be highly disappointing because Jesus is the only one that is perfect. Keep reading in the passages. Let's see what it says. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven on earth, peace to those whom his favor rests. And when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that had happened, which the Lord told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what they had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had said to them. And then look at this next part. Look at what it says. And all the mess and all the chaos and all the noise and all the, hey, let me tell you what we just saw. Hey, these, these angels came and they were like, Bruh! playing rock band in the sky. It was incredible. And then I came over here and I saw what they saw. Let me tell you all about it. And all of that, look at what the last part says. It says, but Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. You know, if you and I could learn something from Mary this Christmas, maybe it would be in the middle of all the chaos and all the mess, maybe our focus should be on Jesus. Because everything was going wrong in our life. Nothing was going right. Nothing was going as planned, right? Nothing was perfect. But when all of the mess happened and all the chaos happened around her, what she looked at was the person of Jesus. So I want to give you four things you can leave here with tonight, right? Four things that you can leave when life gets chaotic, when you start to lose focus. I want to refocus this back on Jesus today because some of you need to hear what we're about to talk about right now is because here's the truth, is when uncertainty prevails, then you need to figure out where you need to go and you need to have something that you can hold on to that will secure you in the times that you feel so insecure. Are you tracking with me? So I'm going to give you four things. Here's the first one is God sees you. God sees you. Listen to me. You're not a mistake. You are not a mistake. I don't care what, what anybody told you. I don't care what you think. You are not an accident. No, the world would not be better if you would not have been born. There's a reason that you're here, and there is a God who loves you enough to see you. 
in the middle of it all. Look at what the, the scripture says, Psalm 33, 18. It says, the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him and on those whose hope is in his unfailing love. So when all uncertainty happens in your life, when nothing makes sense, when chaos hits the fan, at the end of the day, when you can, when you can bank on the fact that God sees you, then you know that you are never alone. It doesn't matter how many people have left you over your time. It doesn't matter how many people have said, I don't want anything to do with you anymore. It makes you feel worthless. It makes you feel like nobody sees you. You're alone in the corner by yourself. You are not alone at Christmas. And Christmas shows you that, that Jesus was born into the mess in the middle of a place that nobody else really wanted to be and nobody else really wanted to go. And he says, I see you. I see you. God sees you today. But not only does he see you, God cares for you. He cares for you. Look at Micah chapter 7, verse 7. It says, but I will watch for the Lord. Look at this next part. I will wait confidently for God who will save me. My God will hear me. And I know this is bringing up a whole lot of emotions because you read a, a passage like that and you go, yeah, but I've been praying this prayer for years. Right? I've been praying for God to do something for years, and it seems like he doesn't listen. It seems like he's as far away as he can possibly be. There's no way that he can hear me. If he could, then why am I still not experiencing what I asked him to experience? And here's the third thing that I would tell you is not only does he see you, not only does he care for you, his plan's better. His plan for your life is better than your plan for your own life. See, Mary had a plan. She had a plan how she wanted to go. But can I tell you, in that moment, if Jesus would have been born in a castle with a ring on his finger, a robe wrapped around him, a crown on his head, can I tell you, then the Christmas story would not be as relevant to you and to me as it is right now. Because, see, then God's distant from you. Then God's, he, he, he can't relate to me. He's some big guy in the sky. He's got everything he needs. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't lack for anything. How in the world does he know what it feels like right now when I don't even know that I'm going to make it to the next paycheck? And God says, no, 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 I got a better plan, Mary. He's not going to be born into a castle. He's going to be born into a cow trough. Nasty. Broken. Messed up. It probably didn't look at anything at all like what you would think a cattle trough would look like right now. It's probably a big gigantic rock that was just carved out on the top. And he was laid in there. And it was to prove to you and to prove to me that Jesus left heaven to come to earth to do one thing and that's to invade your mess and to fix your focus. To invade your mess and fix your focus. That his plan for you is better than your plan for your own life. So not only does God see you, not only does he care for you, not only is his plan better for you, here's the last one right here, is God's love is endless. His love for you will never end. Okay, I need you to take a picture of this. I want you to type this down. I want you to take some notes. Come on, don't make me work tonight and you just sit there. I want you to look pretty, but at the end of the day, you need to do some work. All right, get out, get out your phone, take a picture, jot some notes down, write this scripture down because I'm telling you, this is, the whole, this is, the, this is Christmas in a nutshell right here. All right, and this is what it says in Isaiah 54.10. It says, for the mountains may move and the hills disappear, but even then my faithful love for you will remain. But even then my faithful love for you will remain. Everything else can wash away. Everything else can fall away. Everything else can change. But even then my love for you remains the same. So even when your Christmas goes chaotic, even then, God's love is never failing. Even when you feel all alone and broken and worthless and nobody cares for you, even then, God sees you and his love for you never fails. Even when you've looked at your life and you think that you've messed up the whole plan, that you've ruined it all, that God can never come in and pull you forward and save you and to be there even then, in the brokenness, in the darkness, in the disappointments and in the discouragements, even then, his love will never end. He sees you. Look at me, I need you to hear it. He sees you and he cares for you. And his purpose and his plan for your life is greater than you can ever ask or imagine. 
and his love will never end. And Christmas shows you that. Is that God loved the world so much that he sent Jesus. That a King of kings and of Lord of lords would walk out of heaven and walk on the land that you and I walk on. To be among messed up, broken people. Perfect, sinless. And he says, the reason is because without me, you cannot have a relationship with God. The whole reason that we have Christmas is so that you and I can have a relationship with God. And apart from Jesus, we can't do that. See, the Bible says that we're sinners. And that the wage of sin, the punishment of sin, the debt of sin is death. And that's what you and I deserve. But Christmas, even then, even when you and I were broken with no chance to escape and no chance to heal, even then God's love for you was so great that he says, I'll make a way. I'll make a way for you to have a relationship with me. And all you gotta do is believe. Come on, the Bible says, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you will be saved. That's the gospel. So Christmas is powerful, right? Christmas is powerful because without the birth of Jesus into our world to go through the same things that you and I go through, then we wouldn't even have life. But see, Christmas isn't where it ends because there's this little thing called Easter that happened. And there's a whole lot of gods who died before, who never came back to life. But the only one who came back to life, showed himself to over 400 people and then ascended to the right hand of the Father, praying for you right now in this moment. There's only one of those. There's only one of those. And his name's Jesus. And I want you to meet him tonight. So if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, can we nail that down tonight? It's just right where you are, with nobody looking around, every head bowed, every eye closed. There were some hands in the first service, and I just wanna, I just wanna see. Come on, we're never gonna have a service at church with you where we don't give you an opportunity to say yes to a relationship with Jesus. If you're here and you don't, you've never surrendered your life to him, and tonight you're hearing that he sees you and he cares for you, and he has a plan for your life and that he loves you, so much so that he stepped foot out of his kingdom to walk right here to live the life that you couldn't, to die the death that you should have. But he loves you enough. And as all chaos abounds and life gets messy, his love's never gonna end and it's never gonna fail you. So just right where you are, with nobody looking around, I just wanna ask you if you need a relationship with Jesus tonight, would you just lift your hand up? We're not gonna call you up. We're not gonna make you stand. This is from your heart to God's right now. Just on the count of three, I just want you to put your hand in there. Are you ready? That you're saying yes to a relationship to him tonight, right where you are. One, two, three. You can just lift them up and say, yeah, that's me. That's me. Come on, that's me, I see you, yeah. Come on, you can put them down. I'm gonna lead you in a little prayer, nothing special. It's from your heart to God, you can just say, Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you're the son of God. I believe you came for me and you died for me. But I also believe that you rose for me to give me new life. And I receive it tonight. And I accept your forgiveness and I accept your salvation. And help me live for you the best way I know how for the rest of my life.